truth about ethanol in our fuel and ethanol fuel myths. Ethanol blended fuels seem to be here to stay, and like me, you've probably heard some horror stories about ethanol blended fuel. Ethanol destroys your carburetor. Ethanol messes up your fuel hoses. I hear it attracts water. It will ruin your engine. And some of those are true, but I'm here to tell you the truth about ethanol in our fuel. Here are four truths of what it actually means for us to have to live with ethanol-enhanced fuels for engines in our cars, our boats, lawnmowers, generators, and other gasoline or petrol engine devices. And later in this video, I'll tell you the steps we should take before storing any gasoline-engined item for the winter or other long-term storage. Truth number one, ethanol is a solvent. If you have an engine that has been running non-ethanol blended fuel and you start using ethanol blended fuel, it can lift gunk and deposits and other stuff from the fuel tank, fuel lines, and anywhere in your fuel system. What does this mean to us? Well, it means that merely switching to E10 fuel can potentially cause your fuel filters and carburetor to have issues as any of the loosened gunk makes its way through your fuel system. This can ultimately lead to poor idling or acceleration issues because of blocked passages in your carburetor. Truth number two, water in the fuel tank, phase separation. When E10 gasoline comes into contact with water, the ethanol actually allows some or all of that water to be absorbed. Now that's okay actually, and it's a good thing, but Fuel can reach a saturation point where the water can phase separate to form a distinct layer in the bottom of your fuel tank, and also potentially in a carburetor fuel bowl. When this happens, the upper gasoline layer will be depleted of ethanol and have a reduced octane level. The lower phase separation layer will be a corrosive mix of water and ethanol. A corrosive mix which means it definitely can cause damage to components. Phase separation seems to happen more quickly with higher ethanol blends and in environments with more space for condensation and moisture in the air. In other words, an older vehicle that's been sitting with a half full vented fuel tank is more likely to phase separate than a fuel tank that is full and sealed in a newer vehicle. And this leads us to truth number three. Fuel additives do work but they aren't perfect. Yes, they help stabilize your ethanol blended fuel, but according to a West Marine article on this subject, no chemical agent or fuel additive can be added to E10 gasoline in a reasonable quantity that will fully prevent phase separation or recombine a phase separated layer. In other words, technically there's no way to completely ensure that this won't happen but there are things we can do to help. In addition, the fuel additives cannot restore gasoline to make it usable again. Using a fuel additive like Stable does help resist phase separation and other problems associated with E10 fuels, but if you have a tank of old fuel that has not been treated, products like Stable cannot revive that fuel that has already phase separated to make it usable again. With regards to ethanol fuel additives, it is a common practice for many boat owners and small engine operators to always add the appropriate amount of stabilizer to E10 fuel to help improve the shelf life and usability of the fuel. But remember, these products are not perfect and eventually that fuel is liable to break down and become unusable and possibly damage your fuel system. In other words, technically all fuel should be treated with an additive if it won't be used in a few weeks time. When we consider how long we sometimes go without using a chainsaw or our boat, it's obvious we should be taking better precautions to store these engines. And I'll cover how to do that in a minute. Truth number four, beware of E15 and higher ethanol percentages in your fuel. For over a decade, car engines, boat engines, small engines, and other equipment have been engineered to handle E10 gasoline. But the same is not true for E15 and higher ethanol content fuels. Where this really matters is when you're filling up your car or truck at the filling stations. If your primary vehicle runs on E15 or E85, do not fill your portable fuel containers for your yard equipment with that E15 or higher blended fuel unless you know 
for sure it is okay for your small engines. Or if you're a boater and you're filling up your boat at the same place and time as you fill up your tow vehicle. Make sure you aren't pumping E15 or E85 into your marine engine unless the manual says otherwise as most are definitely not designed to run E15. If you can purchase E10, or even better, ethanol-free fuel for your boat or small engines, doing so can save you a lot of trouble. Moving on to long-term or winter storage tips. Here's something really important. If you are storing an engine for several months without running it, you should follow these steps to help make sure everything works as it should when you want to fire it up. Number one, use fuel with the lowest percentage of ethanol in it for your older engines, especially ones manufactured over 20 years ago. These would be E10, E5, or ideally ethanol free. Number two, if you aren't going to be using all of your fuel in the next few weeks, use a fuel stabilizer and run the engine after the stabilizer is added so that the stabilized fuel is not just sitting in your fuel tank. If you don't typically use stabilizer, but you know a piece of equipment is not going to be used for a while, be sure to use it in the last tank or two of the season, so that way it is completely in your fuel system. Number three, try to store the boat, tractor, mower, or other piece of equipment with a full tank of treated fuel. This provides less airspace in the fuel tank for condensation or moisture to occur, which can reduce the risk of phase separation or run the tank dry, which leaves less fuel to potentially go bad. Number four, if possible, run the carburetor dry to remove all the fuel from the float bowl. Some machines have a fuel cutoff switch so that you can run it dry before storing it. Will we have problems with these ethanol blended fuels in our cars or trucks? If you have an old car, like from the 1990s or older, you should follow the tips I shared for winter storage. However, if you're driving a car that is from this century, in other words, a car that was built after 2000, it most likely has been engineered to handle ethanol blended fuels. But be sure to check your owner's manual or other sources for your specific vehicle to be certain if it can be safely operated on E10. Secondly, newer cars have sealed fuel systems and fuel injection, which provides far less opportunity for moisture to enter the fuel system and cause problems. And lastly, when you're running an engine regularly, like we typically do with our cars, that helps significantly to prevent phase separation. And this video right here is one that YouTube is suggesting just for you. So you better check it out.